Hit that stupid torso, Ragnavalter! You can win! Guts can win! Yes! The critical! <laughs> Ragnavalter! Bloodlust only! On the 1st of July, we completed the most symbolic challenge of all time. Ending C, Bloodlust only. Basically Griffith versus Guts, if you think about it. And some of you may even wonder, what does Bloodlust do? Why making a challenge specifically about it? Welcome, I am Frapolo94, and today we're gonna do something much harder. We're gonna complete Ragnavalder as ending using Bloodlust only in fear and hunger! But before leaving you to the challenge, it's the first time I can say it, and I'm very excited. This video is sponsored by Opera GX. Opera GX is an incredibly customizable web browser, with a lot, and I mean a lot, of quality of life features. Have you ever had your browser running in the background while you are playing something and it literally was sucking up all your RAM? Well, with Opera GX this problem does not exist anymore, cause you're able to customize how much RAM your browser will use. And now we arrive to my favorite feature. Aren't you tired of that old background that you always have on all the browsers? Well, on this browser you can actually customize it with a lot of different themes available on the GX mods page. Let me make an example using the GX Boy. As you can see, we have a different background, a different theme, a different sound in a lot of stuff like when typing, when you open and close windows, and not only that, you can actually combine some of the features of different modes together. Let's search for another mode on the GX Store and... Uh, oh, th there is... Berserk mode. <gasps> there is a Berserk mode! Look at that background! That's fantastic! You also have access to an import tool in case you want to import all the different settings you have on other browsers. Honestly, I didn't know anything about this previously, but I think I'm gonna keep using this. It's so funny being able to customize literally everything to my desire. And if you want to do the same, be sure to download Opera GX yourself using the link in the description below. Thank you so much once again to Opera GX for sponsoring this video, and now let's go back to the challenge. So, in case you don't know, what does Bloodlust do? Bloodlust is a skill that is gonna cost 10 mind and when used it's gonna put a particular status effect on you. This is gonna last randomly either 3 or 4 turns and it's gonna increase your attack by 50%. And you may say, wow, that's very good, like... Why do you say it's bad? Why make it a challenge on it? The first problem is that it has a chance of getting removed when you take damage, specifically a 50% chance of getting removed. But I mean, that's fine, right? I can just create a tank so I will never get damaged, right? The other problem is it only lasts 3 to 4 turns, but, but I mean, overall you gain value from it, right? Oh, and uh... Ragnavalder will become uncontrollable and act on his own when uh, he has bloodlust. Yeah. For those of you that don't know, a party member that cannot be controlled is always bad and is almost always usable only as a meat shield. Because they tend to be pretty stupid about the body parts of the opponent to attack. Boom. No! G b b no! They are attacking the head! THEY ARE ATTACKING THE HEAD! Yeah, that was not a funny moment of my life. But anyways, let's go over the rules. I can only deal damage with bloodlust attacks. But apart from this, I can still do everything else that isn't related to damaging enemies in combat, and even outside of combat. Additionally, I am allowed to apply status effects on the opponents, but... Poison, burning and bleeding are banned, except if applied by the attack of bloodlust. Of course we play on hard mode, because hard mode is the only difficulty in which you can get Ragnavalder as ending. If you see 99 Book of Enlightenment in my inventory during the challenge, it's because I was using them in order to be sure to have a backup in case the PC crashed. Those are still not counting as save files. If I die, I have to restart from the beginning. Of course we go solo, no other party members, not even ghouls or skeletons. And the final part, we have to kill all the bosses which have a special soul that you need for the ending. Because, I mean, if I would just use empty scrolls, then why doing the challenge at all? We are gonna discuss the different strategies as we go, also because, uh, honestly, I have no precise idea about what to do. Typical challenge run. But without further ado, let's go to the first attempt. Let me remove the music, let me open Fjerendanger, Fjerendanger, Fjerendanger... And now... 
I think it's time to start. And I want to put my soul into this, so my name is gonna be Frappollo. Of course, grab Bloodlust in the intro, because fun fact, a lot of people don't know this, Bloodlust is not actually a part of Ragnavaldar's skill tree. The only moments in which you can get Bloodlust are during the intro of Ragnavaldar or if you use an empty scroll. Also, I take the 99 Book of Enlightenment, as I mentioned. And now, what do we do? Well, we have a little problem here at the very start. We... we... we, we can't fight. Uh, let me explain, okay? You remember Bloodlust has a chance of getting removed when attacked? Well, we need a turn to use Bloodlust in battle, and you know, enemies tend to attack you in this game, because it's an RPG. So we can't literally do anything for now, we will have to wait for that. And of course my luck starts being shown already from the start, we get a bug on the weapon table. Let's see what we got. Huh? No. Bro? We hit the coin flip! Yeah, in case you don't know, this weapon table has a chance to give you nothing, even if you get it correctly because it's bugged. But we can't really do anything about bugs, so we just have to deal with them, and uh, this is the moment in which I got uh, the screen freeze bug. <laughs> did, we, did we fail even after hitting the coin flip correctly? <laughs> what the? <laughs> what? It's a bug? <laughs> ah. Hey! Bro! No! No, the screen blocked! Yeah, basically this bug is gonna block the screen until you reset the game. But I got an idea. I have Book of Enlightenment in the book section of my inventory, and I can still move in the game. I just cannot see where I go or what I do. So, I made 2 plus 2. I remembered the sequence of inputs to open the inventory, go into the books, use the Book of Enlightenment, save and reload. The, w was our game saved? Yes! Yes! Here we are! Yes! It works! It works! The run is already legendary just for this. I don't care if we will die, but I am sure we're gonna win now. Roll around the table. Roll around the table. No! Okay. Wait, I need to be fast. I need to be fast. Run away. Run away. Throw the lever. No, I blocked myself. <laughs> I blocked myself! Don't, don't destroy Bloodlust. Okay. Bloodlust is still there. Attack the head. No! Ah, so close. I think this first death shows you more than anything else the main problem we have. Bloodlust random attacks will reduce our consistency so much that unless we are 100% prepared for something, we will lose regardless. It doesn't matter, this first run already gave me an idea of what I have to do in order to win. So, for the next run I am gonna be called Obamna. The main plan I have in my mind is to get the penance armor, which will require to reach Mahabre, as we can't get steel for now. Getting the damaging skills. Scroll off! Guys, we can steal the key from Torture. Well, I take back everything! We can take the penance armor whenever we want now! Also, we loot a little plate helmet around here, it's gonna come useful later. Also in the library, we're able to find an empty scroll and my faithful companion, the Pine Compig Instructions. Okay, they were just gaslighting me. Okay, Pine Compig Instructions! Pine Compig Instructions! Pine Compig Instructions! The run is over! The run is over! The run is over, guys! We won! <laughs> we won! It is always a sign of good luck when I find the Pine Compig Instructions. And indeed, it brought luck. And here, empty scroll! Empty scroll! Empty scroll! Uh... Scroll of the char- We have healing! We have healing! <laughs> what did I say? We don't have the white angel. Boom. Empty scroll. We don't have healing capacity. Boom. Scroll of the Church of Sylvian. We don't have items. Boom. Pine Compig distractions. All we need to get now that we have an empty scroll is a quill to get the first part of our build. What is our build? The Berserker! Am I gonna copy Guts? Psh, we are literally playing with Bloodlust only, what do you mean? We go down into the mines, skip both the Yellow Mages, because in this moment they are basically immortal for us, and reach the Cave Dweller Merchant. This has a 50% chance of selling a quill, and luckily, I got it. Are you ready for the first part of my build? Then, take the empty scroll and write O oh Lord, give White Angel. Not only White Angel's soul is the first part of my build. The Berserker! But it is incredibly useful. It gives you 10 agility. This does various things. First of all, it gives you an extra turn in battle. Then, if all the current members of your party have 20 agility, you can basically use this in the battle menu to run from 100% of the battles. As long as the run option is available, of course. 
course. So now enemies aren't scary anymore. We also take the Cube of the Depths, which makes the whole village angry towards us, but we are quickly able to leave. Also, admire this sick interaction, are you ready? Now let's go here. Boom! Ah! I still wonder if the Kermoler is able to fly, actually. Now, remember I said White Angel Soul allows you to escape 100% of the times? I also have a very bad memory, and in that moment I forgot I had it equipped. But luckily, I am still able to escape with the normal skill run. Yes! Uh, no! Goodbye. Now that we have the White Angel Soul, we can actually fight things. The plan is, in the extra turn, we use Bloodlust, so in the normal turn, we are gonna attack something of the opponent. And we're gonna test this against the first official enemy, Torartor. After stealing the Vault Key using Steel, it's finally time to fight. Good! Yes! Sir. Okay, we won! The Torture is dead! First win of the day! Now, we officially have access to the Penance Armor, but there is a little problem with that. Let me explain. Penance Armor not only gives you a great protection against all the source of physical damage, but it also prevents you from having your arms or legs cut off, from being stunned, and also protects you against two insta-kills of the game, Face Rape of Skin Granny and Peck of the Crow Molar. There is just one slight problem, though. It does not protect from Flock of Crows. One move of the Crow Molar, which is gonna be able to apply blindness on you. And when you are blinded, you cannot see anything. And also, you almost go to zero accuracy. Oh, and did I mention you cannot remove the penance armor? So yeah, before entering inside of the penance armor, I absolutely need to defeat the crow molar. To fight the crow molar, we need the protection against blindness, which is given from the iron mask, the mask you get by defeating Isaiah. But there is a problem. Isaiah can cut off arms, and while I use bloodlust, I cannot guard to prevent limb loss, so I may lose my arms, and so I have a chance to be permanently dead damaged for the rest of the run. Let's do a little bit of backtracking for one second, okay? Let's go into the basement, because we have a 50% chance of stealing an empty scroll from the Iron Shakespeare. 15... Uh, can I use there? Yeah, I can. Okay, now... Steal... Empty scroll... Empty scroll... Empty... Quill... <sighs> it's gonna be one of those runs, isn't it? You know, it's pretty funny because usually the hardest part in my challenge runs is to deal with the hardest bosses. In this run instead, we had to think about everything even just for a complete random one like Isaiah. But in my head, a new plan was born. Even though we can't fight Isaiah, we need something from him. Enter in battle, steal the scroll of fencing from him, and use the skill run. That scroll teaches us fast attack, which is gonna be useful in the future. Next step is to defeat the Cave Mother in the mines. And you may say, but for Apollo, even the Cave Mother can cut off your limbs, yes, but we have red vials to blind her, which is gonna reduce her accuracy a lot. In this case, I have a huge chance of not getting my limbs cut off. And no, I couldn't just blind Isaiah because while I can, Isaiah does two attacks each turn with the sword, which eventually may lead to my demise, so we're gonna do this first. Strategy is simple. Blind the Cave Mother, guard in the normal turn to take less damage, Bloodlust in the extra turn to get at least one attack in, and pray. Okay, the Cave Gnome defeat is good. Tilting the head, perfect. We can attack once more. Okay, one target is gone. Another target is gone. Please, uh, no! Okay, then. Okay, one wing, and... Uh, no! Okay, we're fine. Now let's go, Bloodlust. Come on, okay. Please, don't want to fight now. Don't, don't, don't. Okay, okay, first phase is done. Do you see how unreliable Bloodlust is? Cave Mother is one of the easiest bosses of the game. We have been spending more than five turns in this battle. And phase two was even worse. No, don't attack the head! Yes, sir! Yes, sir! <laughs> After almost dying because of the stupid cave gnomes, finally our first boss soul was obtained. Pain, honestly. Pain. But hey, why did we do this? 
Gnomex. The whole reason is Gnomex, which will be crucial to deal with the Salmon Snake immediately. Basically, if you talk to the Salmon Snake and offer the Gnomex, the Salmon Snake is gonna be permanently stunned for a couple of turns. But by this point, I was finishing my healing items. And if I really want to face the Salmon Snake, I need to be sure to have a backup plan. Now, do you remember I have the Pinecone Pig? Every time you enter a battle with the Pinecone Pig equipped, you have a chance of getting a random item from a selected pool, including healing items. So, who are we gonna use to farm? The Butterfly? The Human Hydra? Nah, that's boring, we're gonna use the Spectre Knight! In case you don't know, as long as you use the skill run, you have 100% chance to escape from the Spectre Knight. And so, we start with our farm. Do you want a little trivia in the meantime? Alright. Do you remember the Old Knight? For some reason, if you have the skill Escape Plan against the fight with the Old Knight, you cannot escape from the battle. But without Escape Plan, you actually have a chance to escape, which probably translates in it being just a bug. But the farming is over, it's time to equip the Plate Helmet. It protects from stun, and the attacks of the Salmon Snake, if he's able to attack us, are gonna stun us with a chance. Plan is simple, offer Gnome Eggs and Bloodlust in the extra turn. Are we ready, guys? Let's go! Okay, Bloodlust. We have one free turn in which we're gonna deal tremendous damage, come on! Oh! 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 Honestly, with all that time preparing, I almost feel scammed for this, but it's so funny. This is the true power of my build. The Berserker! It's time to collect our second soul, the Salmon Snake soul. This prevents our limbs from being cut off and a lot of other stuff which is irrelevant now. But I think you know where this is going. We have Fast Attack, which is gonna give us an extra turn in battle. We have the Salmon Snake soul, which prevents limb losses. We can finally kill Isaiah and get the Iron Mask. But maybe... Before doing that, we should get a better weapon. So we depart for the thicket, take the Eastern Sword, and prepare for the most epic battle of your life. Now, we escape, boom. Easy. Hey, even the biggest battles have a moment of retreat. Also, the Kerumoller tries to speed up things appearing before I kill the Assassin Spectre. But no, before fighting anything, we have to defeat the Assassin Spectre to boost the Eastern Sword. Safe approach is Salmon Snake Soul equipped to prevent limb losses, we fast attack and bloodlust. Boom! It's my turn. I think we are gonna guard the special attack and then we start with bloodlust, I think. Guard, bloodlust! Let's go! Crit, 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 crit! Boom! Purified Eastern Sword! Got him! Finally, the first sword of our build, Debers, is ready. Time to kill Isaiah. Remember, Salmon's Nick Soul and Fast Attack, because the sword of Isaiah is gonna spawn on the second turn of the bed. Huh? The sword did not spawn? Uh, yeah, because of something that I think was caused by escaping from the battle, the sword didn't spawn, but uh, but we were literally ready for everything, and it was not intentional, so we don't care. We gladly show our gratitude to the game for being an unbreakable mess of spaghetti code, and we take the Iron Mask. Now, before fighting the Crow Molar, I still want to be extra sure, so we are gonna enter Mahabre and take extra loot before doing that. Of course, enter Mahabre in the past and traverse the arc on the right to prevent the Kromoler from despawning, and make my way into the Grand Library in which I get, I think, an empty scroll, and that's it, really? Empty scroll which I'm gonna use immediately. I go back to the Dark Priests, and since I am scared of dying to their coin flip attack in case I miss too many attacks in the battle, I am gonna use the Empty Scroll for Engard which is gonna give me even better chances of winning. Back in Mahabre, we used the maps of Isaiah to get transmutation. In case you don't know, you can use the Salmon Snake Pool to make water vials. With transmutation, you can turn them into wine vials, and if you use a wine vial, you will gain more mind than the one you spent to transform a water vial into a wine vial. So you can repeat the process infinitely, while also, if you want, to get more moldy breads in the process. So now we have infinite mind and infinite food. And then we started cooking a strategy for the Molar. The idea of my strategy is, the Molar deals incredible damage with the Molar arm. And if Bloodlust fails from getting removed multiple times in the battle, I am gonna die, because I cannot heal myself. So to have even more health, we equip the Ring of Braids, which if you don't know, it's a little regen at the end of every turn. But now, everything is ready. 
here we are. Now, red vial on the head. We'll do this now, because we need to reach the end of the turn. Flock of Crows is fine. We have the protection against, uh, against it. Now, fast attack, boom. <sighs> Come on. Okay, we're fine. We guard in the normal turn. In the extra turn, we use Bloodlust. Mole. Eh, 12. And back. Ha! You stupid idiot! Bloodlust time! Destroy the molar arm! If you destroy the molar arm, it's gonna be easy. Or we, we can start with the leg, I, I guess. Okay. I lost Bloodlust. Losing Bloodlust in this battle is actually good, because this is not a, a fast battle. This is a grindy battle, okay? Now, Bloodlust once again. Come on. Yes! Oh no, didn't crit. Ah, the one attack that needed to crit. Then, on the next turn, on the next extra turn, we start with Bloodlust. Come on. Mole. Yeah. Boop. Staring, perfect. 90 HP is better. Bloodlust! Destroy that stupid molar arm! Or the, the, the other leg, okay. Less targets, less targets, less targets. Bloodlust remained. Oh, 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 no, no. No, 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 no. Okay, the other army, okay. But, uh... Bloodlust, please go away. No, no, no. Bloodlust is still there. Yes, the modern army is destroyed. We are safe. Yes, yes, we are safe. We are safe. We are safe. We are safe. Okay, come on. Boom. Yes. Goodbye, Crow Molar. The third soul of the challenge is obtained. The Crow Molar soul. Also, you know what does this mean? It's Penance Armor time! The next piece of our build! Deber. You know, it's so funny, the more we continue to this challenge, the more it seems like this epic quest to create the perfect setup for Guts. This is the moment of the run in which we reached a stable situation. It is now time to go around and start collecting the fruits of our planning. In other words, it's time to kill some bosses. Feeling pretty confident, it's time to equip the White Angel Soul and kill the Iron Shakespeare. Okay. No bleeding, perfect. We just straight up start with Bloodlust and hope. Please destroy the arms or the torso. No, no. Yes! <laughs> Fourth Soul has been obtained very easily for the Berserker. Now it is time for the Black Witch. To approach this fight, we keep the Soul Devour necklace in our accessory slot, because she is able to use Black Orb, which does magical damage. And combined with the other arm, she has a chance to literally one turn kill us. It is so funny thinking about these little plays which can really change the outcome of what may happen. So, it's time to go. So, we may win in one turn if we attack the torso. Or, okay, Black Orb. Black Orb is fine. It's fine. Okay. Unfortunately, Bloodlust cut off the wrong arm. And now, we are in a stall. She does too much damage with Black Orb for us to be able to outheal it and use Bloodlust again. I think this is the end of my run. But hey, in that moment I realized, we don't have guard anymore in this moment. Think outside of the box. If we escape the battle, heal us, and then re-enter in the battle with guard. Not only one arm is already destroyed, but we can literally enter and exit the battle multiple times until the Bloodlust is able to kill the Black Orb arm. There she is! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Laugh, you stupid idiot. Bloodlust! Come on! Destroy the arm! Yes! Uh, we won! Finally! Oh, that's so good, 2700 damage. Black Witch is finally dead, and we take our fifth soul. And now back to refill my wine vials with transmutation. Next step is Skin Granny. Skin Granny is, if you are unprepared, one of the hardest bosses in the game. Unless you are lucky or you have a well-equipped full party. But her critical state ability will be able to kill someone almost surely if you are not prepared. Salmon Snake Soul is the key. It protects you from critical state, which otherwise would bring you to 1 HP. Our setup is incredibly good. The only bad part? Oh, bloodlust, of course! But I was still pretty hopeful. And the start of the fight was not even that bad. We destroyed some arms and... Uh, wait, wait, bloodlust didn't get removed. Uh, uh, hey, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa! Hey, calm down! No, 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 no!
Face Rip does 5 damage, no, we are fine. After having another heart attack because of this stupid game, we got our 6th soul. Now follow my reasoning. Remember why Black Witch was hard? Because of Black Orb. She became easy once we realized we could actually escape the battle. So, what would happen if she had a lot more HP and if we weren't able to escape from the battle? It means we would be fighting Valtail! This moron has every turn a chance to cast Black Orb or Hurting on us. Both attacks which will deal at least half of our HP as damage. We are in a very precarious position and we cannot even do anything about it. Here I do not want to rely on consistency. Here I want to rely on speed running. I decided to put the Black Witch Soul on me, which makes it so that my attacks deal poison. And then after praying to Olmir, it was time to enter. <laughs> Poison? Okay! But remove Bloodlust! Remove Bloodlust! Okay! We can idle the whole fight! We can idle the whole fight! We can idle the- Yes! 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 Okay! Okay! And my plan of course worked! Now that Valtel is poisoned, we just have to tank and we're gonna be able to win the battle. And just like that, the seventh soul, Valtel's soul, was obtained. Among the remaining bosses, there is still one of them which scares me a lot. Francois. You may say, just talk and stun him, yes, but if you reach phase 2 before killing the arms, then regardless of the stun, he is able to do a coin flip attack, and the coin flip attack will cause a difficult battle to start with its golden version fully restored, on which also talk doesn't work anymore. Basically, if Francois is able to land the coin flip attack, we lost. But we will think about it later, it's Chambara time. Create a husk in the secret laboratory and go, right? But before doing that, I wanted to do something else. I wanted to get another empty scroll, so it was time to fight the old knight to get the guaranteed empty scroll in Nosramos chamber. The fight is very simple, you have to grind the battle slowly with bloodlust and loving whispers while having the iron Shakespeare soul equipped to take even less damage. And eventually, after I think 7 turns or something, we were finally able to triumph. Why did we need this empty scroll exactly? It's very simple, we need another sword which is gonna be very helpful against Chambara. And that's why we're gonna use the scroll to write all or give the passages to get the passages of Mahabre and take the blue scene from the mines. No! Wrong book! No! Um, um, um. Um, um. Let's pretend nothing ever happened, okay? Let's pretend nothing ever happened. Yeah, listen, I had the passages in the inventory, I misclicked. I am not gonna restart from the beginning because of a misclick. So be sure to unsubscribe, leave a dislike, cause we are gonna continue! Now that we have the blue scene, let's curse it to get the cursed blue scene. Why do we want this weapon? For the upcoming fight against Chambara. Cursed Blue Scene has a 70% chance to burn the opponent. Burn is gonna be pretty strong both on Chambara and on the wheels around him. Can't we just use Poison with Black Witch Soul? I want to equip the Iron Shakespeare Soul just to take less damage, which is why I don't want to use the Black Witch Soul. Now, let me explain what happens if you burn the wheels in Phase 2. The mechanic is to attack both wheels on the same turn to make them jam and make Chambara vulnerable. But guess what? If you put a dot, like burn on them, they are automatically gonna be jammed. So if you burn both of them, they are gonna be always jammed and the Chambara is gonna be always vulnerable. Bloodlust, kill the torso! Burn on the torso, burn on the torso! Yes! Uh, okay! That's pretty good. That's pretty good. It's not over yet, guys. Because the torso doesn't die when reaching zero H uh, 1 HP. No! He didn't remove Bloodlust! Oh, oh, oh! No! No, 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 no! Okay, we put burn on one on, a, on one circle, okay? Then they are swinging. Please, remove Bloodlust! Remove Bloodlust, please! No! 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 Please, remove Bloodlust! Eh! Okay, Bloodlust is done. Okay! Okay. One circle is down. Bloodlust and let's hope. Please, please. No, not that circle. Uh, okay, they're swinging. 
Please remove my glove lust, please. Remove it. Remove it. I'm not oh, oh, or do this, okay? No, don't attack it. No, attack the freaking other circle. Ugh. Okay. Okay. Okay, swings, uh, swings. Okay, attack. Yes, sir. Did we put burning? I think I, we did. I think we did. I think we did. Now we just have to wait. Revolution tier. Yes, that's fine. Chains. Chains. Okay. Jammed and vulnerable. Yeah, okay. Chambara is vulnerable. Now we just have to land one hit on Chambara. We are gonna do this very slowly. Yes, sir! Yes, sir! Easy peasy. Eight soul, Chambara soul obtained. And immediately after Chambara, White Angel time! Easy, right? Good. Fast attack. We start with fast attack. Okay. Now, in the extra turn, this is the normal turn. So I think uh, we use Bloodlust. Yeah, we use Bloodlust. Okay, one arm is down. Okay, that's very good. Single blade, it's a sustainable damage. No, Bloodlust didn't go away. No, no, destroy the other arm, please. No, no, there's gonna be the coin flip. No, 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 no. Now, if you don't know these guys, uh, White Angel, uh, with this coin flip... Uh... Yes! Yes! <sighs> My brother in Olmir, finally the game is giving me some luck. After another flawless victory, the ninth soul was obtained. It is finally time... For Francois. And we... Unfortunately, one shot the nameless figurine. Is teratophobia? Oh, teratophobia, maybe it's the worst fear of the dungeon, if I remember correctly. Oh no! No! Guys, you know what does that mean? We just created a new difficult boss fight, the old guardian. Now you may wonder why I'm saying unfortunately. Because we didn't kill the arms of the nameless figurine. And in case you don't know, his arms are connected to those of the old guardian. Long story short, we had the chance to weaken the old guardian here. But we got bad luck. Later on, we will have to fight the old guardian in its prime. But since we are here, we cut off the organ to make the butterfly soul appear on the first floor. And we take the key to access the fight with Francois. <sighs> Okay. Bloodlust. Okay. Okay, the burn. The burn. If now we are able to go... No. If now he attacks me and removes Bloodlust, I'm gonna be fine. No. Don't go into second phase, please. Okay. Remove Bloodlust, please. No. <laughs> okay? Since we reached the second phase without killing the arms, I am gonna do something. I am gonna keep guarding in the normal turns and talking in the extra turns to stun him. And once he does the coin flip attack, maybe you don't know this, but there is a peculiarity in this battle. For some reason, Francois will do the coin flip attack only one time in the whole battle. So after getting rid of that one, it is Jover for him. I mean, yeah, he was already burning, but I wanted to explain this piece of trivia regardless. And the tenth soul was obtained. And the final boss of our run is gonna be the Old Guardian. In case you don't know, I have a special fear for the Old Guardian. Because during Ragnavaldar as ending item only run, which if you want is present on the channel, let's say we didn't have the best approach ever. You know, you know what? I'm gonna show you. A boulder! Oh, oh! No! 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 Oh! 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 Ah! <laughs> yeah. Also, we take Butterfly Soul because, yes, the 11th soul is obtained. We are only missing the old Guardian soul. Thinking about a plan was excruciatingly tense. In the end, I decided, better safe than sorry. I am gonna keep the Iron Shakespeare soul to have even more defense. That's it.
It's time to go and it's the last trick up my sleeve. With good enough timing, you can actually end guard the old guardian. We are in a fantastic position to set up ourselves. It is time. We can use fast attack. We can start with bloodlust. And now we just have to hope that the berserker is able to leave the dungeon of fear and hunger. So long. Boom. And like this. Ragnavalder! Uh, no, wait, actually, no! I don't have a soul stone. I don't have a soul stone. Uh oh. Yeah, after all these epic moments, etc., I didn't have a soul stone. <laughs> but, but, I had exactly 20 silver coins to buy a soul stone from the vendor in Mahabre, no worries. I ran back fast to the vendor to buy a soul stone and went back here to take the soul. And now, for real, we are able to live. You know, Bloodlust before this challenge to me was a pretty terrible skill. And after this, it didn't change at all, honestly, but, but, there was something different. Experimenting with it and defeating everyone has been kinda funny. I don't know how to express this feeling exactly, but I think at its core, it is the sole reason for which I like to do challenge runs. To put myself in the most unfavorable or unusual conditions and make the most out of even the worst piece of garbage you can find. Because even garbage, if valorized well enough, can become gold. And now, when someone will ask you, would Guts be able to survive the dungeon of fear and hunger? You will be able to say, it is the dungeon that won't survive Guts. All right, and another challenge run recap has been completed. What do you think about this one? Because for me, it is always pretty nostalgic going back and rewatch the old challenges I did, but uh, I don't know if the majority of my public knows about these challenges or was present when I did them. Especially for that, let me know if you liked it. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, let me know in the comments other challenges I could recap. But anyways, for the time being, I was Frapolo94, and I will see you next time.